Let's keep talking markets this week with Pete Nigerian joining us, co-owner of Market Rebellion. Uh, Pete, we are jammed this week with stuff. Uh, what's uh, number one on your calendar? Well, you know, it's got to be earnings, right? I mean, I, I think when we look at what the Fed's going to have to say, we probably have a pretty good idea. We know that they're going to move out to September, if the possibility of those cuts and so forth. But I think that the reality is we've just got to see what does big cap tech, what are they able to do? Are they going to be able to fulfill things? Are they going to be able to take themselves out of what's been this downward turn over the last month or so? So I think that's pretty interesting. We all know about the rotation. We know the the big move that we have seen in the IWM, we also know about the monstrous move to the downside out of the NASDAQ because of what we've been watching. And it's just a matter of, can anybody actually give us the numbers we're looking for? We had some good numbers that came out of other tech names, the IBMs of the world and so forth, but it's really much more about Meta, it's about Microsoft, it's about AMD, it's about the chips, and what are they gonna be able to deliver? And, and we're gonna get some of that information this week. Okay. The uh, uh, market so far hasn't loved what we got from Alphabet, Tesla. I mean, look, only sample size of two. Any reason to think uh, these others will go pretty well? I mean, Meta's a lot like Alphabet in many ways. Apple seemingly has already now kind of uh, slowed their AI timeline, according to the Bloomberg report. These don't seem like terribly encouraging things. No, I would agree with you. And as, as so far, I mean, take a look at the drop that you've seen from Apple on that big, massive move to the upside that it made, and then suddenly just pulled back like everybody else. Usually Apple isn't like everybody else. Apple is Apple. They, they stand in front. They're, you know, the elite company that we oh. always talk about. And yet they've had their stumbles as well. And th were they late to certain things? Absolutely. I think when you look at AI, they've done a great job, but they were also a little bit late. And this is a little bit different than anything we've seen in the past from Apple. They seem much more normal. They seem much more like the rest of the stocks that we talk about all the time. They're not the, as elite as they th as I think they once were. But that doesn't mean that they can't absolutely crush it, and they potentially could. But I think that's what we're looking for. And you got to wonder, are we able to see some of these earnings continue to to get some strength because overall I would say we've lowered some of the expectations by doing so I think some of the some of the different stocks over the last couple of weeks have been able to step right over that but I think it's going to be interesting to see when we get these big cap tech names the many of them have gotten awfully expensive in my opinion you look at some of these PEs they are no longer the cheap stocks they once were you know the one name that actually stands out for me that's impressive is Meta because I look at that company and I look to see what their P.E. looks like. They're cheaper than Apple. They're cheaper than Microsoft. They're cheaper than almost any one of the other names that you'd probably throw towards them. And, and yet they still have to prove it to us. And I think it'll be very interesting to see how well they're doing, how much spend they're able to make. And that's one thing about Zuckerberg. Zuckerberg will absolutely go to whatever level he thinks is the right level for spend. And I think that's something that's a little bit different than some of the other companies. I love that point. Uh, Ford, PE, Meta, uh, basically at Alphabet's level now, like a 23. So uh, <laughs> to your point, uh, pretty cheap compared to the Mag 7. I mean, way even cheaper than an Apple. And I mean, Meta is going to put up, I think, some of the best trailing numbers, right? Like 20%. Um, so a lot of these, other than like the chips and stuff, have already sold all their semiconductors. So I like that. Uh, all right. So maybe met a little underappreciated valuation wise. The other one that catches my eye too coming to this is AMD down yeah. pretty big off the highs. I mean, nowhere clear, uh, nowhere close to like Nvidia's booming growth, but it's always in the same breath. So given how much it dropped, uh, pressure on for it to rally this time. Well, I, I think so. And I think that the CEO has felt a little bit of that pressure because they haven't kept up for a while. It was like a, you know, a, it was like a horse race, right? They were kind of going back and forth. We knew NVIDIA was in front of them, but nonetheless, those were the two, right? And it seems like something happened and, and AMD just so, suddenly fell very far behind. I've seen a lot of interesting option paper in there, most of it looking bullish. I don't know. We'll see if that actually plays out. But the reality is, that when you look at AMD, it's even a little bit stretched, even though it's made this pullback. You know, we've seen a lot of different companies that have made significant pullbacks off of those 52-week highs, some of them coming in March, some of them coming in June. But when you take a look across the board, there's a huge pullback. Obviously, that's been the influence when we look at the NASDAQ itself. 
but it's very, very, it's, it's pretty dramatic, it's pretty big, and you just wonder, what do they need to do? How are they gonna be able to get themselves back in the saddle? I can tell you, very far out of the money, AMD calls, I've seen some of that. We'll see if they actually can come through, but it's gonna be a, a, a very interesting quarter, I think, when it comes to AMD. Obviously, NVIDIA's further out, but I think those two are the biggies that we're looking at. The fact that uh, a couple quarters ago, when we heard about all the hyperscalers spending, uh, in fact, it was Meta that kind of dropped, talking about how much they're going to spend, but then NVIDIA rallied around it because the market said, okay, well, we'll swap that out. We'll go to what you're buying. So the fact that we didn't get a chip bid last week when Alphabet said the same thing, that to me was like a yellow flag. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, I, I would agree with you. And I'm, I'm a little bit concerned about this because if things don't come out very well this week and we've got all these various earnings, I mean, it's just, a, it's a crazy week for technology, for semiconductors. It's going to be big, but I think it's going to be interesting to see, can they actually beat and beat in a big way? And I think that's what I think most people are looking for. I still think that a lot of us are, are watching these companies as they've kind of shifted around, kind of moving, and they found themselves a spot. But even on this pullback, I think there are some of those that, that do stand out as fairly expensive. I, and, and I would throw in there, not just chip stocks, but I'd even look at like a Microsoft right now. I think that's gotten a little bit more expensive than most would think, but I think the reality is they're working on so many different angles. And of course, they had that great pivot where everything was about cloud, 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 cloud. Suddenly it turned to AI under the convenience of what was going on in the markets. And I, I think that's an interesting take from, from the standpoint of what Microsoft has been able to do and how fast they've been able to shift. Yeah, uh, almost a 40 uh, forward uh, earnings uh, valuation. I mean, pretty lofty stuff, even by Microsoft standards. Uh, Pete, uh, on this subject, uh, if we kind of put it together with volatility in general, we got the spike in the VIX, but you pull back the last couple of years, it's still lower than the previous VIX pop in the spring that was rates related, lower than the VIX pop before that. What do you think it would take for us to really see like a heightened vol, kind of like a high correlation uh, a panic thing? Or do we stay in this regime where, you know, unless there's a big shock from the Fed, markets firm up? Right. I think you're exactly right saying the shock from the Fed. I think that's as big as anything that's out there for sure as far as the market moving. And I think when you look at it right now, we were stuck in the 12s all through May, most of June. As we get into July, all of a sudden we start to see a little bit of these fireworks kind of fire off. Now we're in a range that I'd call, call it 15 to 19. We were stuck at 12, which seemed like forever, just because we hadn't been there for a while. And the fact that we were sustained there in a volatility that was 12, we always say this, you know, when the, when, when the opportunity is there and it gets that cheap, you've got to be a buyer. When it starts to get fairly expensive, you start to have to consider being a seller. I don't know that it's at the seller's point right now, but 15 to 19, it was basically trading around 17. Right when I came on, it was about 16 and a half. I'm a little bit surprised by that just because of the volatility of what we're seeing in the market and the daily movement that we're seeing has been pretty incredible. We've had some huge moves like a Friday. We just sprinted to the upside. But there's been a lot of days where we've been up a couple hundred, we've been down a couple hundred, we've moved around pretty significantly. I think that warrants where we are on the volatility index right now. I think 16 makes a lot of sense. That basically implies about a 1% move every single day from the S&P. That's kind of what we're seeing, although we've seen a little bit more than that actually of late. Okay. Yeah, the uh, VIX move here, uh, it makes it pretty interesting, puts the pressure on. Uh, Pete, last thought is, uh, you know, with all this culminating on Friday with jobs, uh, how does that rank? I mean, uh, there, as long as we don't, like, trigger SOM rule unemployment, are we okay? I think so. I, I don't think that we're sitting in a spot right now where we're going to have some news that's absolutely going to completely shock us. I think that we have prepared pretty well. I think the Fed has basically pointed out to us, obviously, last Friday, talking about the PCE. That was their tool that they want to look at. And then we get to these jobs numbers and so forth. There's, there's so much, and I can tell you, each and every day, the most important thing is whatever is going on at that upper level. Earnings, yes, that's a big deal, but that's usually very specific. I think when you're talking about the full market itself, you've got to really look at just about everything that the Fed's looking at and then try to decipher from that okay, are we in a, in a very comfortable spot or not? And I think right now, think, I think people are fairly comfortable, not overly comfortable, but certainly with a little bit more volatility there. I think people have digested that. They've gotten used to that. 
and they're back to that normal thing where the VIX is trading somewhere closer to 16. I think people are fairly comfortable. I don't think that we have the market moving numbers on Friday, but that could be a surprise. All right. Great stuff. Uh, great walkthrough here. Good prep for the week. Thanks, Pete. Thank you. Appreciate that. Good analysis. Pete Nigerian, co-owner of Market Rebellion.